This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a, a choice. Everyone said, I have a choice. If you're miserable, stay home in your closet and don't tell nobody you know Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Things are happening. No doubt about it. What a time and season to be alive. You know, God specifically allowed us to come and maintain in this realm at this time. That's special. I mean, that's special, man. Think about it. Everyone say, I'm special. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're special. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> oh, glory. How many of you know we're in a battle? Emotional, spiritually, physically, mentally, demonically. <laughs> and it's, and it's, and it's it, it, you know, right now we're in a period of what we want to call rest. Resting for refreshing and reconnecting. Why? So we can kick more butt. That's what it's about. God is refreshing us right now and strengthening us so we can go back into the battle. Amen? So we gather together to get refreshed and reconnected so we can go back into the battle. But was it Sunday or Friday night? What? I think the Lord released something, said that we were in, a, in like the eye of the storm and in a period of rest and refreshing and restrengthening so that as the storm continues, we can enter in and begin to drive things out. You know, there's something that we have talked about before, and the Holy Spirit just really uh, emphasized to me the reality that has to be identified in us on a constant level. Would you turn to Luke 4 with me? Luke 4. And the book of Luke in chapter 4, now remember Luke was the physician who also wrote the book of Acts. So he saw all the things that was happening. And one of the things that he wrote about in this chapter is so identifying, not only with Christ, but the Lord is saying, I want you to identify with me in this. See, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And one of the things he steals is your identity. Many people are still looking for identity in the world. They're still looking for identity in abilities. They're still looking for identity in their education. Still, but they're not looking at the true identity of who they are in Christ. See, people may label you at certain things. You may be a husband, a wife, a doctor, or a nurse, or whatever, but that's not who your true identity is. And one of the things the enemy is doing is bringing false identity to the body of Christ and causing people to miss out what God is doing. See, without maintaining your identity, it's difficult to overcome. Does everybody understand? Because, see, the enemy knows when your identity has been compromised. See, there's three areas, compromised, mixed, or lost. Is everybody with me? See, what happens is the enemy wants to come and compromise your identity, mix it with another identity, so he can get you a place where it's lost, which is living outside of salvation's truth, which is the true identity. That's why the Lord tells us, I want you to hang around with people of like-minded faith. Why? So you can express Christ's character to one another and maintain your identity. You know, what happens is when people begin to associate with people that are not walking in their true identity, it begins to spread on them. So you've got to, got to be careful who you associate with because associations bring impartations. Even in the area of music. See, what the enemy is trying to do is nullify the identity of Christ in God's people. So there's music, there's movies, there's media, there's all kinds of things. Even education will try to nullify. Even science will try to nullify your identity in Christ. 
So we are in a battle right now where people are losing their identity, compromising their identity, mixing it with something else. False heroes of the world. You know, when we're real kids, you know, we always want to be like Superman, Superwoman, or whatever, you know, or a special sports person, or a special singer, or whatever. But when we were children, we acted like children, we thought like children, but we began to grow and mature now. It's time to let those false identities go and to begin to grab hold of who you truly are. And Jesus was attacked with this. The powerful example of Christ. Go to Luke 4, chapter 1, or Luke 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? It says, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. See, being filled with the Holy Spirit is the sealing of your anointing. The problem is the enemy likes to steal it, compromise it. See, now I want you to know something. If you're really walking in the anointing, you're being led by the truth. So when there is compromise, suspicions, assumptions, you're not being led by truth no more. That means you're not being led by the Spirit. And that means your identity has been mixed or compromised. And you don't even know it. Now you're believing all kinds of voices, all kinds of emotions. And your identity has been depleted. Or you'd stand on the truth. You'd know the truth. You'd know exactly what's happening. Amen? And it says here, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, God would never lead you into a place without him. Does everybody get it? It says, Being tempted... For 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing, and afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, what was he trying to do? Compromise his identity. He was challenging him who he is. I want you to know that demons challenge you every day. You don't even see it. You don't feel it. You hear it and don't even recognize it because you think it's your own thoughts. Oh, yeah. If you are the Son of God, command these stones become bread. Now, why would the devil tell him that? Because he knew, knew Jesus was hungry. The guy didn't eat for 40 days or drink anything. Amen? If you're the Son of God, turn these things and make your own bread. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written. It is written. He always went back to his identity. Does everybody get it? He always went back to who he is. It is written. Why? Because it was written about him. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word of God. Of course, the devil wasn't done yet. Then the devil taking him up on the high mountain. Now, did Jesus allow this to happen? Yes. He could have cut his head off, buried him right there and said, see ya. But he was going through a process to leave an example for me and you. He paid the great price as an example for me and you. Then the devil taking him up on the high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said, look at me, man. And the devil said to him, all oh, this authority I will give you. Why? Because the devil has authority. He's the ruler of the earth. Amen? Jesus is the owner, but the devil's lease is about up. He's been out on bail. Amen? And I will give you, and I give you the, I will give it to you and their glory for this has been delivered to me, which he wasn't lying for the first time, and give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. He was trying to entice him with the things of the world. <laughs> he doesn't realize he created the world. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, again, he challenged his identity. Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, it sh He shall give his angels charge over you and keep you. How many of you know the devil knows a word 
Oh, he knows the word very well. He'll challenge you on it. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So he was actually telling him, I am your God. <laughs> How you're tempting me. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until when? An opportune time. So just because you won the first battle doesn't mean there's not a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and continuous battle. Amen? <laughs> then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Why? Because his identity was fulfilled. He had to go through these three phases to fulfill his identity. Again, he was filled. He was led to be tested. His genuineness of authenticity of identity. Is everybody with me? He was authentic. He was real. He was sincere. He was honest. He was trustworthy. Unhypocritical. The original. Amen? The enemy was attempting to disqualify his identity. Jesus returned. He was trying to return Jesus to the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. He was trying to bring his back his identity to the world. When we're supposed to be separating our identity away from the world. Amen? Again, the devil comes to compromise your identity. Mix your identity. And that brings confusion. Amen? Again, when he begins to mix your identity, people go in a state of confusion. And he wants to get your identity lost, which is living outside of salvation's truth. And finally, what he does is exchanges your identity for a false one. He prepares all of this to get you in exchange for a false one. Does everybody get it? And that's what we're talking about today, false identity. Jesus' confession reaffirmed his identity by passing the test of demonic challenges. It says he returned in the power. In other words, he returned with a purpose, destiny, and authority of increased power directly related to his identity. If you don't know who you are, hello, remember the demons? Remember the uh, Scivia or whatever, sons or whatever? And uh, the priest over there tried to cast out demons out of this dude? He says, in the name of Jesus and God, and Paul's God, Jesus, I cast you out. The demons said, yeah, right, homie. They kicked his butt. He ran out but naked because he said Paul we know Jesus we know but who are you and I'm telling you the enemy will challenge you in this all the time who are you he knows if he can move you or exchange your identity mix your identity or compromise your identity he has access does everybody get this this is what's happening all over the world Genesis 3 Oh, no, wait a minute. I want to go to somewhere else. Verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has a what? Anointed me to what? Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's why the anointing is on us. But I want you to know that if the enemy can compromise your identity, he compromises the anointing also. Because your, direct identi your identity is directly attached to the anointing. Is everybody okay? Genesis 3. Oh, happy days. You know, that's why it's so important that the parents be examples to the children. We see so many broken homes these days. And these broken homes are caused by the enemy. Amen? And so what happens is that the children see the things, there's no identity in Christ there. It's identity in sorrow, pain, and in the world. 
And most of the time, it's identity of blame. Discouragement. Without faith, you can't maintain your identity. Genesis 3, verse 1, let's speak it. Then the serpent was what? More cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, you got to understand something. The Lord already warned them. Hello? He said, man, don't talk to the serpent. Don't go near that tree. Even though it's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's the tree of death. If you have any questions, come to me. <laughs> but the serpent kept psh, releasing that voice, releasing that voice. Really, every time she walked by the tree, every time, but then he waited for her not to be with her husband. Oh, he was in the garden, but he wasn't standing there with her in front of that tree. That's when a woman, the serpent grabbed her, hold her. Listen to me. And challenged her. He was he challenging her identity. And a woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it. Well, she already touched it. It was too late. How did she touch it? With her mind. lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, God's a liar. Because he said, you shall not surely die. So he called God a liar. But again, you got to understand something. He already knew he compromised her identity. Does everybody get it? Now he can throw in more stuff. Now he's bringing a mixed identity. What's the next thing he says? For God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you're going to be like what? God. Well, she already was like God. Not that she was God, amen? But you couldn't get any closer than that. <laughs> Knowing good and evil. And a woman said, okay, cool. I'll, I'll exchange it. So it started with a compromise, mixed, now lost. And when she partake, then she also shared with her husband, he partook. I'm not going to go into all the other stuff. And what happens? It says that both of their eyes were open in verse 7, and they knew that they were naked. Why? Because there was no longer, they no longer held their identity. They were no longer the Adam and Eve of God's offspring. Now they are the offspring of the serpent. Does everybody get it? And they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves coverings. Why? Now it's self-protection. See, when your true identity is there, you don't need to protect yourself. You're protected. <laughs> Somebody get it? Other than that, you're still protecting yourself. You're fighting for yourself. You're not fighting for God's presence. You're not, fight you're not fighting for the things of heaven. You're fighting for the world. That means you've lost it. Food, pleasure, self-exaltation, which is pride. Identity were compromised, mixed it, and they finally lost it. Amen? 1 Timothy 4. False identity. What are you identifying yourself with in everything of your life? We always must discern what we're identifying ourselves with. Always. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, let's speak it together. Now the Holy Spirit does what? Expressly. Let me tell you, when he says expressly, he's on the housetops going, listen, everybody, listen. I got something to tell you. And if you don't get it, you're going to blow it. That's exactly what he was doing. Come on, you can hear him walking up on top sometimes. <laughs> Wake up. He was warning them. He was warning them about an increase of the attack to establish a false identity from the enemy. 
He said, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Okay. Some will depart from the faith. Forever attached in the heavenlies. Connected. Giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Hello, do we need to go any further? Who told you that? What are you hearing? What are you listening to? See, when you hear God, you obey and do it. When you listen, you're just going, yeah, 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 yeah. And you don't do nothing. See, when you listen, when God speaks and you're only listening, that means you're hearing the voice of the devil. And you're going to obey that voice and not the voice of God. See, if you're listening to God, then you're not hearing him. That means you're hearing the devil. Does everybody get that? Oh, hallelujah. He was warning us about the increase of attack of establishing us in the latter days with false identity by false fulfillments. False fulfillments. See, what you want to be fulfilled with is expressed to who you are. Amen? Remember, your heart is the court of all desire. When people know what your desires are, they know who you are. Galatians 3. But even people have false desires. They even lie to themselves. False identity. Oh, hallelujah. Galatians 3, 1, let's speak it together. Oh, foolish Galatians, I think he's very gentle here. Amen. <laughs> he didn't call them morons or idiots. He said, oh, foolish. So he was very gentle. Although I think Paul really got off sometimes, man. <laughs> Yo. Who has what? Who has what? bewitched you. In other words, who has spoke to you a lie? And you didn't get it. You didn't discern it and you accepted it, believed it, and put it into operation. That you should not obey the truth. That means that you should not obey the Spirit, that you should not be led by the Spirit. Why? Because you've already compromised your identity. Now you're not obeying the Spirit. Listen, obeying the Spirit means in everything. It's not just in what you want. Amen? That's how people grieve the Spirit and don't even know it. Because they're only going to listen to the Spirit or what the things they want to listen to. Does everybody understand that? Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing, hello, of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? What happened? Compromised and mixed identity. Does everybody get it? Is everybody all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Better lift your hands. I have to get another drink. Praise God. <laughs> Whew. Are you so stupid? How about that? <laughs> Haven't begun in the spirit and now you're being made perfect by the flesh? You idiot. Have you suffered so many things in vain? Woe is me. If need, if indeed it was in vain, therefore he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law, law or by what? Hearing of faith. <laughs> wow. 
hearing of faith. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you works miracles among you. Does he do it by the working of the law or by hearing of the faith, just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness? Therefore, know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. As the Scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of the faith are blessed with believing Abraham. See, there's an inheritance blessing that comes down. Whoa. Those of the faith forever attached in the heavenlies identify themselves with the words of Christ, promises of Christ, covenant of Christ, character of Christ, and love of Christ. And I will repeat it. I got the looks of what are you? Is everybody all right? Those of the faith who are forever attached into the heavenlies, identify themselves with the words of Christ. Well, where are the words of Christ? The written. Amen? Plus his voice. The promises of Christ. They identify themselves in everything they do with the words of Christ, with the promises of Christ, with the covenant of Christ. Are you a covenant keeper? The character of Christ. And the love of Christ, because perfect love casts out what? All fear. All fear. Colossians 3. Do I need to repeat it? Go to, what is it, at Eternal Library? Or, I don't know. You'll find it. Ask Carolyn. <laughs> Colossians 3. Is everybody okay? Are you, are, are you all right? Are you blessed? You, you, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you hot? Then get hot. <laughs> it's a good day to get hot. Colossians 3, verse 1. Let's speak it. Hallelujah. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts, set your mind, set your desires in the things where? Above. Not in the things of the earth. For you died. Everyone say, I'm, I died. That's what means born again. If you haven't died to the old, then you ain't born again. That's what the word says. He who's in Christ is a new creation. Old things pass away. And why aren't things passing away? Because a person ain't dead to the old things. You allow the old things to come into the prison, you ain't born again. It's a state of being. Does everybody get it? Why? Because you just exchange your identity. Now the old do it again. You act in the old ways, the old emotions, the old feelings, the old desires, the old thoughts. And you're in a woe with me. It's all about me. Instead of all about him. Set your mind, your thoughts, your desires. And the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. Everyone say, my life is in Christ. I don't have a life. And without Christ, I don't have a life. That's simple enough. <laughs> now look at verse 4. For when Christ, who is our life, hello, appears, then you also appear with him in glory. So those who will not appear with him in glory have sold out their identity or exchanged it. You must maintain your identity if you want to make it home. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them, but now you yourselves are to put off all of these things. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language, and 
out of your mouth. And don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Wow. Many still identify themselves with their fears, feelings, sorrows, pains, sickness, failures, disappointments, traumas, rejections, offenses, lack. Some people still desire their lack of things. Decisions, relationships, abilities, jobs, compromising their calling, purpose, and identity. And how do they do that? By compromising their identity in Christ. You know, one of the things when the Lord was giving me this message, I saw a person in a jail cell. And on every bar was a label in the jail cell. They were like in a small a cage, like. And at every bar on it, one was fear, oppression, this, that, whatever. And they kept reading all of those things. And Jesus walked up and unlocked the jail, the door. And the person didn't come out. Because they were still reading those labels that were keeping them in bondage. And they kept saying, Lord, set me free, set me free. And he said, I did get the heck out of there. Why do you keep reading these things of the voice of the enemy that keep you in here? It says the truth sets you free. See, you may know the truth and you're not free until you put it into action. That's activating faith. It must be activated. Now it becomes power. This is where truth becomes power. The door swings wide open. You're no longer attached to those labels anymore, and you walk away from the old into the new. Why? Because you're maintaining and refreshing. Everyone say, I must refresh my identity all the time. I didn't say refresh. I said refresh. Amen? Praise God. Galatians chapter 5. In verse 1. Galatians 5 verse 1. Glory, glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ made you free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you what? Nothing. That was a work of religion. It was an act of religious. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, the anointing. You who attempt to be justified by the law, self-righteousness. You have fallen from grace, God's plan. Remember, God's plan is always to what? Escape. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but what? Faith Working through love. You ran well. What happened to you, man? What happened to you? You. From obeying the what? Truth. From following the truth. From living the truth. From loving the truth. What happened to you? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I am confidence, I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind, any other thought, but you'll expose these foolish thoughts of lies and deception that compromise your identity. But he who troubles you shall bear his own judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to freedom or liberty. Only do not use this liberty as an opportunity for the flesh by through Love, serve one another. For the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another. Again, faith working through love. 
not identifying yourself with Christ, they begin to identify themselves with self-righteousness. Acts and forms of traditions that lead to open opportunities to the desires and works of the flesh. These things nullify your identity in Christ and they promote the identity of the flesh. 2 Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians 3, is everybody there? Verse 1, let's speak it together. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or do we need as some other epistles of commendations to you or letters of commendation from you? You are what? Our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not by with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the flesh, that is, of the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who has also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. You and I are epistles of Christ. We are walking, living carriers of the voice of God that is written manif by the manifestation of Christ by the exchange of your character for his. By the exchange of your I old identity for his identity now. You're no longer walking in the assumption. Amen? Suspicions. Old wise tales. Amen? Oh, carnal things. For the anointing of Christ is now leading you in all truth. But again, if you're not maintaining you, who you are in Christ, the anointing cannot lead you. You will be misled. Remember, the anointing is associated with the true identity of who you are. You can say it. But if you ain't living it, believing it, and setting your mind on it, you're not being led by truth. Amen? Oh, glory. False identity is promoted by lies. Identifying with the flesh and false presumptions. How about false perception? See, when your identity is compromised, you can't perceive correctly. In fact, it's impossible to. It's like when something's requiring so many batteries and you're missing one. Yeah. Philippians 3. This toy requires 14 batteries. It only has 13. That means it only can move in two sections. In other words, you ain't in. You're not driving on four, all four wheels, man. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3. And verse 17. Everybody there? Brethren. Join in following my example. Wow, wait a minute. If he's asking you to join in following the example, he's asking you to identify with him. Amen? Brethren, join in my, following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. Identify yourself with those who are following Christ. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly, worldly, voice of the stranger things. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body and that it may be conformed to the, his glorious body according to the working of by which 
he is able even to subdue all things to himself. In other words, we're going to have a glorified body. It's waiting for us. It's the final redemption. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. No more aches and pains. Amen? You can go scuba diving with no gear. You can play tennis on both sides. All those that wanted to dunk a basketball, <laughs> you ain't got to worry about it no more. <laughs> We are following the identity with Christ. His example is not of human carnal expression or tradition, but from Jesus. That's why you and I have the Holy Spirit. Amen? 1 Peter 4. And then one more scripture. 1 Peter. Don't sell your identity. Don't compromise your identity. And don't mix your identity. You'll end up in a lost identity and taking hold of a false identity. That's the big battle right now. That's the big, big battle right now. That's what's happening. And of course we know that it's an emotional battle. Because people will sell out their identity for emotional losing an emotional battle. That's how the enemy attacks, doesn't he? Emotion. Verse 1, let's go. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, let's speak it. Therefore, since Christ did what? Suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the what? Same mind, the same mind, the same thoughts, identifying yourself with his thoughts. Amen? For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that he no longer should live for the, the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the what? Will of God. For we have spent enough of our past time, lifetime, in doing the will of the Gentiles, which is the will of the enemy. And when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominations, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you don't run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. That's your persecution. Why? Because you're not following according to the ways of the world. You know, kids have it rough being in school. There's constantly that peer pressure. Man, what a light to the world when they stand up and who know their identity, who they are. They will lead many to the Lord big time. Verse 5, it says, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel is preached to also those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. Whoa. Verse 6, for this reason, the gospel is preached, I mean 7, but the end of all things is what? At hand. Therefore be what? Be what? Serious, man. Be serious. That means that you need to be consistent and alert. And watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for the love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling, complaining. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as, God's, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Praise God. And we're going to close at Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Glory. Let's speak it. Therefore, be what? Imitators of God as dear children. Now, that's pretty intense. Be imitators of God. In other words, you better get an identity. Not that you are God, but you're his offspring. Now, if you know that you're his offspring, that means that all dominion and authority has been given to you. That you have power over the powers of darkness. That you're an overcomer. That he was in you is greater than he was in the world. That you're more than a conqueror. Amen? That you're seated in heavenly places. That you're blessed with every spiritual blessing. See, these are identities of who these are all promises and attributes of your true identity in Christ. 
And when you go, when you begin to struggle, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because that's who you are now. And when the enemy starts hitting you with other desires, no, the Lord is my fulfillment. See, you're pushing out the world and all its influence. And you're letting heaven, the king of all heavens, the creator of all heavens, and the power and the glory of his Christ have his reign in you in thought, word, deed, and emotion. Glory. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, given himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor false foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater. Now what is an idolater? Anyone who identifies themselves with the things of the world and not heaven. Not eternity, not Christ. Who is an idolater who has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God? In other words, he's saying, listen, you better maintain your identity or you ain't entering in. That is your ID to get into heaven. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Do not be what? partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you're the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. you got to maintain your identity. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them, because they're going to mix your identity. Amen? They're going to compromise your identity, and then they're going to steal it and give you a false one. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See, when a person begins to compromise their identity, they begin to sleep. They begin to fall into a sleep. See, the enemy knows that if he can get you into a compromise, he can get you into a mixed. If he can get you into a mixed, now he can get you into a lost. Then he knows he can exchange your identity for a false one. And people go back into the world. Establishing an identity of the world instead of in Christ. And we see it happening all over the world. That's what the falling away is. We must be careful. We must be consistent. We must be alert. We must stay in fellowship. Amen? Because without the anointing, it ain't going to happen. People are losing their identity all over the world. But then there are people who are getting their identity. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect the seed and what has been imparted in us covering it with the blood and sealing it with the Holy Spirit that it may grow and bear fruit and bring to remembrance to each and every one of us. And we promise to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And anyone in here, Lord, that's compromised their identity, bring a reality to them that they may turn, repent, and come back to you for their full identity. In Jesus' name. Anybody said amen?